For this assignment, you're going to need a 12 inch wooden board with turntable, a pair of, a pair of calipers. Um, I'm going to issue a template, an oval shaped template, as what we call the start. And what we're going to be learning is how to build hollow from the start using the traditional coil method. Uh, what's not traditional is using a extruder to make the coils. Traditionally, the coils were made, you know, Native Americans would make coils like this, uh, or roll it on a table, but they didn't have tables, so that's why they did it like this. The trouble with making coils on a table is that the table is porous, sucking moisture out of the clay. Your hands are porous, sucking moisture out of the clay. And by the time the, you've made a good coil, it's got this thin layer of dry, so it doesn't really stick to itself. If we use fr nice fresh clay right out of the bag into this extruder, we're gonna extrude it through this die. And this is the perfect size coil for this next adventure. So this is called an extruder. This is called an extruder die. This is called a collet. It's what holds the die in place. This is the cylinder. This is the mount. And this is the ram. So each part, it's important to know the names of each part of the extruder. So, there's four extruders here at the Bow College. Three of them in this room, one next door, which you can have access to. So, there shouldn't be anybody having to stand around waiting in line for the use of an extruder. Uh, I've got, enough, I've got enough dies for each of these. So that's going to work out pretty good. What, what I'm going to do now is put, uh, it looks to be about eight pounds of clay. Uh, if you're, um, sometimes, it's, it's sometimes that I've seen uh, people um, make the tray down here like this on the floor. Uh, make sure you're doing it on the clean part of the floor uh, so you can get your upper body weight uh, forced down on it. And when you're doing this, kind of roll it until it looks like a giant burrito. Big eight pound burrito shaped piece of clay. So please down in here. Okay. Um, oh, another thing that I discovered last semester if you're really short, if you're a short person, the extruder next door is actually about a foot lower. Um, and that room isn't, that, that room is available for us. If, if this extruder turns out to be too hard to use. So, um, this is called a closed hitch. You're going to slide the closed hitch over the mount. And Crank the ram down. Notice, holding up safety notice, notice that my head is not under the extruder as I'm coming down, right? That would be, would be bad. So make sure that you're always like this. Um, if it's really hard to do, it might be that the clay you're using is too hard. If it's really soft clay, it's just a, like dog knife on the floor. So the, the, this way, cut off from the factory is perfect for, for this um, process. Okay, so I had made some manila uh, templates. I will have provided that. And what the template does is it just makes the right size shape for the start. So, clay 
likes to be cylinder toned and domed. And this part is, is we're going to take dome one on the first day, let it get stiff enough to flip over to do dome two on the next day. And so uh, we, we may or may not, you may or may not get to this today, uh, but you, you probably will. Um, so I'm going to start by applying the tape. I'm going to start the first coil. Did you see how I pushed down so that this could be joined like that? And it's so it's almost like so it has the same thickness. That's an important thing to do first. Uh, let's see the caliper. It's handy. It's important to have a caliper handy so that you can you will, this helps you control the uh, shape as you go by measure. So it looks to be almost 12 inches. Right. Yeah, it is 12 inches wide. That is widest point. The, the start of your of your project will be 12 inches wide and 12 inches tall. Yeah, maybe not. Um, no, I think this would be it's going to be more of a challenge. But I think it's going to be a worthwhile challenge. It's worth, well, I should say, at least 12 inches tall or more. Okay. And we're making a dome. A dome with a, an oval dome. Right? It's more than one kind of dome. So not spherical. <laughs> a not spherical dome. An oblong dome. Right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to want is what's called a shrink mix. That goes on the inside. I'm going to put that on the inside first. Now, since this clay is Look how fresh this clay is. It sticks to itself, just like that, right? A lot of times you may see a YouTube video of a person scoring and then putting slip on it and then putting another in, scoring and da da That's a, that's a very uh, labor-intensive, unnecessary step if you're using a, an extruder to make the clay. So I'm just going to go straight away. But what if you have to bank your coil? Uh, coil inventory. It's likely that you guys will have your own coil inventory, but your job is to, if you do that, then you need to make sure that you keep the cover the plastic. Or just, you know, better yet, it just works efficiently enough that you use all of it that in the same day. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm dragging the, I'm pulling the clay from the outside into the shrink ring on the inside, like this. It's not like I'm pinching, it's like I'm tugging the clay. Now I'm going to flip it over and do it again. On the, uh, this time I'm going to be dragging the clay from the inside out to the outside coil. And those just that simple act will be enough to join your shrink ring to your first court. What is the purpose of the shrink ring? Um, when, 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 this, this is stage one, the, or stone one. Right. The next time, we're going to flip it over, flatten the bottom and flip it over. This will be the clay, this inside ring will be the clay to start dome two. Okay. Thank you. So that's, yeah. This is in preparation for dome two. All right. So the next challenge is keeping the dome, keeping the clay from. We're making a dome, not a bowl. 
and the next challenge is getting it dome shaped. It's, you'll, you'll, you'll have to learn by trial and error how to control it. If you, starting with, if you pinch the coil, it'll get longer. If the coil's longer, it'll get wider. You don't want it that, you're going the wrong direction. Okay, so did you see how I smashed that down before I applied the coil over it? And did you notice that this, this coil that I just laid down is slightly, slightly shorter than the last one? Now, you have to train your eye to recognize that. This is, this is where you have to pay attention to detail. A lot of times people will make this one wider than that one and you're going in the wrong direction again. Right? Okay, so now I'm going to drag some of the shrink ring clay up onto the first course while I'm dragging the um, outside, the clay on the outside coil down onto uh, this, this vase. So this is a, it's, it's this, this is the action, like that. And so I'm pulling the clay from the inside out and I'm pulling the clay from the outside in. It looks like I'm pinching it, but I'm not. This is not pinching. This is pinching. This is pull. So pull, 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 like that. Now, Watching somebody build a coil top or, or a sculpture with coils is sort of like watching paint dry. <laughs> okay, because it's, it's a little bit tedious. But once you get your rhythm going, once you get a rhythm, um, it's like knitting. You know, once you figure out how to do the action. It becomes, in your muscle memory, it becomes second nature. But that takes practice for it to be second nature. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. Um, there's two ways, two important ways of keeping this a dome shape. One is, each course, each coil, course, each coil, every coil is shorter than the last one. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I finally got it. Okay, so here we go. Now, sometimes, Oftentimes I'll see people do one at a time. They'll go all the way around, they'll push, 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 push on the outside, then they'll pull, 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 pull on the inside. And that's okay, it just takes twice as long. <laughs> okay? This is just, well, this is just the, the most efficient way, because you're pulling and pushing uh, in equal and opposite force uh, on one another. And you'll want to be sure you're thorough about it, because otherwise, you might find a gap, or one might want to crack where that's going to be. Boom! Just trying to get a view. <laughs> that's a good idea. Okay, once again, this coil is significantly shorter than the last one. All right. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I had one person who's... This is a physically demanding way of making sculpture. Okay, just a warning. Why don't you sit down? And... <laughs> this is not a sitting exercise. The reason why... <laughs> it's what he's asking it has to do with body mechanics. Um, this looks like it would be really tedious and it would be, oh, it would be nice if I could just sit down and do this, but the problem is you need the, your working range for this to be effective needs to be between your sternum and your navel, like that, so that your arms 
can go down in there naturally. If you try to sit down to do this, what's going to happen is that your now your wrists are all bent and your still your elbows are above your armpits, and it, it, it feels awkward because it is awkward. Okay, this is just a very awkward way to work. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. And that will be, become more and more dramatic to call it a shift. Right? Okay. Right? Okay, so how many courses have I done so far? This one, is this the fourth one? I think that's number five. Oh, I think this is coming. Yeah, I think you're right. That's a, oops, that one came up short. I'll just use one of these leftovers. Right. Okay, so the next tool that you'll need to have in your hand is your serrated metal rib. Can I borrow the serrated metal rib? Anyone? What does that look like? Arnold. A serrated metal rib looks like a flexible aluminum um, piece of sheet metal the shape of a kidney. Okay. The serrations are really effective in unifying the wall thicknesses on the inside and the outside. I'm going to start on the inside with a curve like this, and I'm going to rake the serrations against my hand like this, that my hand on the outside is supporting this action of, of uh, scraping the, it looks like I'm scraping the clay away, but in fact, I'm knocking down the high parts and dragging them into the low parts. This is a way of getting a unified wall thickness, and it also finishes the job of joining the coils. So notice how important the turntable is to this, right? You're working without a turntable, you have to stop, turn, stop, turn. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's, there's no way to get a real rhythm going without your turntable. So make sure you, if you haven't gotten a turntable yet, that's your homework for this assignment. Oh, by the way, this is probably going to take 25 pounds of clay uh, to complete. So if you, if you used up your clay on the mass assignment, you'll need to get another bag of clay for this, uh, for this next assignment. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around on the inside. Now I'm going to, again, support from the inside out, and I'm going to pull the tool at a diagonal. Notice how, as I rake this serrated surface, see these little dimples? It's really, the serrated edges reveal where there's a uh, unequal wall uh, thickness. So I just keep doing this action until that detail goes away. And that, in this way, we can do two things at once. We can start the contour of a dome and build with a uniform wall thickness. If you're going to be altering this form in any way with your uh, paddle, you're going to want the wall thicknesses to be the same because then they'll respond the same as, as you um, make modifications in design refinement. Now later, when we all have a large vessel form, like you saw in uh, Elaine's um, uh, slides, um, this, in this process, we're going to uh, des put a design, a, apply a two-dimensional design on a three-dimensional surface using two techniques, uh, carving and graffito. So the carving part is for what we call machina, 
and Scofito is, is the opposite of that. And so we're going to use um, a darker clay, um, a lighter clay, to create contrast. So ultimately, the design that you apply to this project will be um, have these three ingredients: actual dimension, contrast, and visual width. The design don't have to tell a story. Uh, in the form of resemblance, you can be all, they can be abstract or elemental. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that they be abstract and elemental so that you're not burdened by having to do something narrative. Okay, so this is the, this is the part where you ask me questions about this that I haven't, something I haven't mentioned. But a state of, it's obvious to you, but not to me. I'm going to ask a stupid question. What are we making? What are we making? <laughs> so, in, remember when she was showing, the first picture she showed, we said, that's, that's an example of a vessel sculpture? Okay, that's what we're doing. That's, that's the name of the, that we're just using. It's the simplest, it's the simplest um, shape that I know of. Um, for learning how to do coil assembly. Now, sometimes people see the artwork that I make. See that owl up there? The one with the oh, yeah. coil for the wings? Oh. Now that I have it. Oh. Maybe we do, do the Vanna White thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Two domes and then those two domes, when they stack up, they add a total height of 12, or is it is each dome, each half is 12 inches? Each dome, each stark, each stark. let's call it each stark, yeah. is 12 oh. inches tall. Got it, okay. And the apex of the curve is 12 inches tall. Got it. So you could actually say that about this. this By the way, she yeah. Once upon a time, right there. That was that was the start. That was the width of the start. Mm -hmm. So this, this was this, right? Yeah. And then once it got caught leather hard, it's not flattened it out up here. Flipped it over, and it was it was an open container right here at this apex. So from here onward, I did the second dome. Got it. Now in this case, it's not an open <coughs> vessel; it's a closed form. Uh, now some people see that and they go, oh, "I think I'd rather do that." You're going to learn the same technique in you know, tall building either way. So. Got it. You can have at it if you want to make a bird, but you'll need to do it this way. Um, so some of the advantages of learning how to build hollow from the start is that you don't ever have to concern yourself with any kind of sub-assembly in here that might shrink, might uh, get too big as the clay shrinks and traps and stuff like that. Um, The clay's strength is in its shape. So this clay, as long as you're working that with this inward uh, continuous dome inward, gravity will work in your favor. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm fresh out. I just used up all of my clay. So I'm going to show now how to get the ram out. Um, the biggest, the first problem or the first uh, challenge that a beginner is going to encounter is the quilt often likes to get 
jams on the uh, mount. So if that happens to you, if you, if you, if you, um, if you do this lateral action like this, that loosens it up. And then as you lower the rim handle, you you get your hand up to slide the clothes hitch up. And you, you want to be careful when you're doing that because you get your fingers pinched, right? So I'm going to lower the rim, raise the clothes hitch, lower the rim, raise the clothes hitch, and Really going to be 12 inches by the time you bring that to the top? Right now, it looks like that, that doesn't look like it, does it? It doesn't. As I, as I work, I just think it's taller. Each time, see, I'm, 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 yeah. I like to do this ribbing inside and out every three ports. Uh, and you'll see why uh, that's important. Oh, I didn't, I didn't turn. Another person who had, uh, I think they had arthritis, um, they discovered that they could use their knuckles on the outside, just as effectively as the finger. Mm -hmm. That was really quite out. Okay, so now I'm going to do that weird thing again. This time I'm going to apply quite a bit more force and this is where I would say this technique applies the kind of force you need uh, unless you're standing up and, and, and this, is, this is the action right this is the this is your power range this is the action Side of my hand against my rib on the outside, I have essentially decided I've inflated it. Got a hold. But this is still narrower than that. That's the important thing. Sometimes you do that and then they just force too hard and this ends up being wider than this. Now that's not a dome. That's a on the way to a bowl. You're not making bowls, you're making domes. So now can you visualize? If you follow, visualize this contour and just follow it to its logical conclusion, you can see how it's going to be about, you know, it's going to be about that high. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to continue working on this until it's the right size so that you have a, sam a visual sample of what yours should look like. And before I leave today, I'm going to park it over here in the Western Progress part of the room with the plastic tent. I'll show people how to create a plastic tent for the project. So that you'll have it. Uh, it will be closer to uh, firm enough to flip over. Um, I have ways of, ex I'll teach you ways of extending the time and compressing the time that it takes to get it stiff enough to work on the next.